middle school, but tonight word the student with the knife was simply tired of being beaten up at a school. Reporting this story live from Lauder Hill, the night team's Nicole Insalata. Nicole? Well, Craig, the mother of the boy accused of bringing this knife to school was unable to do an interview with us on the advice of her son's attorney. But she does say that police have been called before about this ongoing feud. Nothing had changed, and now her son is in serious trouble. Step two times in the side. Bandages and bloodstains mark where 15-year-old Lerone Brockington says he was slashed by a schoolmate at Lauder Hill Middle Wednesday morning, just before classes started. And he put his hand in his book bag, and then he put it out and stopped me. Police arrested 13-year-old Charles Robinson, seen here in the white shirt, and charged him with a felony, bringing a weapon on campus. My child should not have been stabbed on school campus with a knife. But deputies say the story is more complicated, that Brockington seen here gingerly walking out of the hospital and another eighth grader punched 13-year-old Robinson first. And now Brockington and his friend, seen here in the blue shirt and handcuffs, are facing misdemeanor battery charges. The two kids had an ongoing dispute, which led to the event today. Police say the 13-year-old Robinson was jumped by the two eighth graders back in the fall, which Brockington's mother denies. It's not uncommon for a child or adolescent to have fantasies of revenge. But experts like psychologist Dr. Mitch Spiro say that students embroiled in ongoing fights should seek help before the worst happens. Fantasies may be healthy. The actions can have repercussions that can totally destroy their own lives. And certainly serious repercussions here. Now, how to handle a bully? Some advice for parents. Tell the teacher and the principal if something like this is going on. Know your child's friends and talk to them and let them know how you feel about bullies. Another option is also to call the bully's parents. And you might also want to think about enrolling your child in a self-defense course. Now, experts say that is not for revenge purposes, but so that your child will feel better about himself and also if the worst should happen that your child will be able to defend himself. Now in fact police believe that may have been what was going on in this case, that the boy with the knife may have been trying to defend himself, but again, all three facing charges. Reporting live in Lauder Hill, Nicole Insalata, 7 News 19. Well, is someone you know a drama queen? You know the type. They thrive on the negative. They exaggerate. They go overboard. But you, too, could be a drama queen and not even know it. CBS4 Health Specialist Dr. Sean Kniff explains. Whether they're on the street, on the job, or on our arms, many of us live with them. Some of us even love them. They're drama queens. There are certain people that just love drama. I mean, like, do you like drama in your life? Of course. But drama can Regina be draining, even dangerous. I knew how this would be settled in the animal world. <laughs> and experts say being overly dramatic is a diagnosis. Some psychologists call it dramatic personality disorder. Others call it histrionic disorder. It can be incapacitating for those who have it, and it can have a profound effect on the people around them. Dr. Mitch Spiro is a licensed psychologist at Memorial Regional Hospital. These individuals have difficulty separating the thought from the feeling from the action. And it's not just women. Men can be drama queens, too. Out of my house now! So how do you diagnose drama queen disorder? First, they always want to be the center of attention. They like the attention. And then when they have the drama, they have the attention. It has to be something going on in their life. And there are broad emotional shifts. When they're on an up, everything is extremely up. But when they're on a down, it's a devastating fact that becomes a histrionic overreaction to the circumstances at hand. They're often excessively sensitive to criticism and frustrated by routine. They're, in a sense, excitement junkies, that they truly live on the extreme edges of emotionality. They often lack commitment to people and goals, and often they make rash decisions. Evidence suggests drama disorders are not genetic or even cultural. They're learned behaviors. Dr. Spiro says that's good news because any drama queen can be helped with therapy. Any behavior that can be learned 
can be unlearned. Daniel and Nick and Michael and I. Well, most people with dramatic personality disorders, if you can believe it, don't even realize they have a problem. The people around them usually bring it to their attention, which has to be done very carefully. Otherwise, you guessed it, more drama. Now, if you want to learn more about dramatic disorders, go to CBS4.com, where I'll be posting the fascinating, unedited conversation I had with Dr. Spiro. Dr. Sean Kniff, CBS4 News. Very interesting. We all know somebody like oh, that, yeah. don't we? We all do, yeah, yes. They make life fun, but in small Sometimes. doses. <laughs> exactly. And that's your latest weather. Matt, Meredith. All right, Al, thank you very much. you got to see this to believe it. A child psychologist from Florida says he has taught his pet turtle to perform the same tricks as a dog. <laughs> Mitch Spiro is here with his turtle named Florida. Hey, Mitch, hey, how are Mitch. you? Hey, Mitch. Just can I, a footnote, Mitch was here seven years ago. He was the child psychologist who evaluated Elian Gonzalez. Oh, my gosh. And was here on this show for that. So we have a history. Yeah. How did you figure out that, that Florida could actually do tricks? I work with a lot of children with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and they have trouble paying attention. And we found that this turtle pays attention better than a lot of people. And, and we're it's looking at some of the at things at it can do. He rolls over, he sits, he stays, he you plays know, dead and he'll come. And on the more serious side, you really do use this turtle to help children in your practice. We literally say that he helps children to come out of their shells. And, and how does he do that? Well, the children love him, they pay attention to him. As they're coming up the hallway, they'll see him in his aquarium, and I'll say, would you like to see my turtle do tricks? And they literally think I'm crazy. <laughs> I bring him out, and he does tricks for them, and then we bring him into session, and it helps them to feel comfortable in the process of therapy. We're running That's the video here yeah. because Florida's not having the best morning right now. He doesn't want to do it. But Mitch, thank you very yeah, much for, for bringing in. him by. And I, I smell your own show on NBC. No question. <laughs> it won't be my show. It'll be Florida shows. And this is Torterra, my son Philip's card. See, all children love turtles. Oh, that's and cool. Philip collects Pokemon cards. Yeah. And this Remember is, the Ninja Turtles, yeah. too? So that's yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks, and Mitch. Children love them. Thank Good you, Mitch. Have you. Nice to have you. Thanks, Florida. Up next, attention. <laughs> Tank the shuttle's chances of getting off the ground at all. Come on, go fast, 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 fast. Okay, Florida, sit. And a turtle that even has dogs doing a double take. Wait until you see this. Well, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but what about a turtle? Well, Hedel Gandhi introduces us to a hard-shelled reptile who can match anything man's best friend can do and helps kids at the same time. Sit. Shake. Good boy. Other paw. Mitchell Spiro Good has boy. spent 10 years training his special pet. Come on. Good Meet boy. Florida, the turtle Sit. that does dog tricks. Other paw, there you go. Okay, so if he wasn't a psychologist, you might think Dr. Spiro's a little crazy until you see that even though this turtle's got a small brain, he's got quite the big act. Come on, go fast, 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 fast. Okay, Florida, sit, stay, roll over. Come on, good boy. Play dead, don't move. Okay, come on, hurry up. Come on, you'll miss the school bus. Hurry up, let's go fast. Come on, hurry, hurry, hurry. Well, that's pretty impressive, Florida, but what do you think? You think you could go fetch? Come on. Oh, this might take a while, but it gives us some time to show you how the turtle's tricks are helping kids come out of their shell. I was nervous, you know? <laughs> Because I'm shy. When seven-year-old Ariana Weibel started having nightmares a year ago, she came to see Dr. Spiro. <laughs> But before facing her fears, she found a new friend in this little turtle. I thought he was pretty slow at first, but when I saw him run, he was really fast. <laughs> Faster than a regular turtle could run. He's not shy at all. He comes right out of his shell for you. Come. Because he knows me well. And as Ariana's sister Alexandra meets Florida for the first time. Cool. Glad you I've never that? seen that. You can see how the turtle's talent works wonders. <laughs> I thought it was really cool how you could train a turtle to do that, and I thought that anything is possible. Including using the turtle to show kids how to overcome obstacles like dealing with divorce. And I put the doll on the back of the turtle, and he literally carried her from one house to the other, back and forth. And she finally understood the concept that now mommy was going to have a house and daddy was going to have a house and it was okay for her to go back and forth. All the way up. And while the kids catch on quick. 
Roll over. Good boy. The Good adults day. were the skeptics. I wasn't quite sure what he meant when he said he trained the turtle, but it was obvious when I came in that he could get the turtle to do things and, and that Ariana was responding. Like the turtle, the therapy can move slow, but in the end, there's a lesson that even parents can take home. Good boy. Rewarding good behavior works. I'll often say, you know, turtles, they can be pretty difficult. Kids are easy. Hedel Gandhi, NBC6. That the is unbelievable. I'm speechless. My dog doesn't <laughs> roll over. His turtle rolls over. You know, I'm allergic to dogs, so maybe I should invest in a turtle. And 10 years of training in 2017, you'll have a turtle at It'll flips. be slow, but it'll teach me patience, right? Weekend's looking pretty good. Good. Nice and warm. An SUV that you won't forget either as we take you across America. A turtle doing some unbelievable tricks, and the turtle actually helps kids too. This incredible story only here on NBC6. It is on its nose. Both people on board are okay. A 12 year old boy is locked up tonight, accused of taking a bat and beating a toddler to death. And tonight, we're hearing for the first time what happened just moments after that little girl's death. CBS 4's Natalia Zaya has been working on this story since it first broke, and Natalia joins us live with new information tonight. Natalia? Well, that boy is in state custody tonight after a judge refused to release him to his family yesterday. And I spoke with an expert tonight who says it is very likely there were signs that violence was coming. Listening to the 911 call, the 12 year old murder suspect and his uncle placed from this Lauder Hill home, you can hear the boy's youth in his voice. Police say the boy later confessed to beating his second cousin, 17-month-old Shalo Joseph, with a bat here in her home while he was babysitting her and his 10-year-old brother. It's a horrible situation. Child psychologist child Dr. Mitchell Spiro has spent years treating children with violent tendencies. He's upset about this murder, but not shocked a 12-year-old is accused of committing it. At 12 years old, a child's just developing a conventional sense of morality of right and wrong. I'm sure that the individual knew that what he was doing was wrong, but at that point wasn't able to contain or control his anger, and it completely got out of hand to a fatal level. Lauder Hill police say the boy had no criminal record and no known mental illnesses, but Dr. Spiro says in most cases of extreme violence, there are warning signs. Usually it won't come out of nowhere, but something that has been building either anger or jealousy toward that other individual or other children of a younger age, or a feeling of anger and frustration of being left with that level of responsibility. A police say the boy was babysitting because the baby's parents had to work and those parents could potentially face charges for leaving their child in the care of another child. Now that 12 year old boy has been charged with first degree murder as a juvenile and state prosecutors could change that charge and a grand jury could even decide whether to charge him as an adult. We're live in Fort Lauderdale. Natalia Zaya, CBS 4 News tonight. Thank you, Natalia. Miami Police. History Month question. The 15th Amendment granting African Americans the right to vote was passed on February 3rd, 1870. For more on Black History Month, log on to our website, cbs4.com. Well, we've all heard that adage, it's a man's world. But now more than ever, women who choose to play the game like a man are being called something new from bots. Well, how do you know if you're one of these? Well, CBS4 health specialist Dr. Sean Kniff has the test. Care to have a little fun? Care to have a little fun? No, actually, I. Uh... I have to save the world. In the movies, they attacked Austin Powers. Who are you? But in The Devil Wears Prada, Meryl Streep comes closer to the real thing. What are you doing here? Say hello to the Fembot, a new breed of women who are saying goodbye to touchy-feely femininity. She is able to stick to a very rigid, functional, achievement mode while she's in her career path. Dr. Mitchell Spiro is a licensed psychologist at Memorial Healthcare System. A fembot may be an individual that places more emphasis on work than love and pleasure activities or play. So who are these wonder women? We went searching for some in South Florida, armed with our unscientific fembot quiz. First question, would you rather be rich, in love, or in control?
In control. Because <laughs> if I'm in control, I'll be rich and then I'll have love. Second question. Marriage makes me smile, makes me nervous, or makes me nauseous? Nauseous. Smile. <laughs> smile. Third, when it comes to sex, it's about romance, procreation, or recreation. That's hard. <laughs> Next. Romance. You gotta have the romance. It's recreation because it's having fun, yes, with someone you like. And finally, feelings are overlooked, overanalyzed, or overrated. I'm a person who don't like to express uh, her feelings, so... If you answered C to most of these questions, you might be a fembot. Spiro says for some, that fembot lifestyle can backfire. They often have difficulty dating and delay starting a family. A fembot may be put in a situation where she's tabled marriage until too late in life for child rearing. We want to keep track of the timeline in our lives. But many can and do have both. It's just a matter of shifting that famous fembot focus from business to balance. A balance of intelligence, experience, and knowledge while you're at work does not have to affect the type of mothering or loving that you're giving. Now, I have to admit, there is a bit of a double standard here. Some of these fembot qualities are considered desirable in a man, but fembots needn't worry. If your all-business attitude isn't making you unhappy, then in all likelihood, it's probably not unhealthy. I think it's a big double standard myself. Yeah. I want to put you on the spot. You're a single guy. Mm -hmm. Would you date a fembot? I haven't dated a fembot yet. I like the touchy-feely. I'm a cuddler, <laughs> Elliot. Come on. You know, you've heard that about oh, me. Okay. Well, in Austin <laughs> Powers, they have the cute outfit, at least. Right. Thank well, you, Doctor. Ah, the good life. Mm -hmm. But is there a downside to living the good life? Some experts say being affluent can turn some kids into lazy, overweight, unmotivated adults. Yep, this American epidemic is called affluenza, and it's captured the attention of social scientists across the country. Dr. Sean Kniff has the story. Let's face it, some people are born so wealthy they don't have to work. Are they enjoying the spoils of success or are they just spoiled and suffering from a high living, low motivation lifestyle experts call affluenza? Affluenza can be described as a family that spends more money than time with their children. Dr. Mitchell Spiro is a licensed psychologist at Memorial Health Care System. He says today's two-income households have increased parental purchasing power, but that's actually part of the problem. Meet Kelly De Silva Vocati and her two daughters, two-and-a-half-year-old Chloe and one-year-old Chesney. Like many modern moms, Kelly is able to give her girls many more toys and treats than she ever had as a kid. It might be easier for me to provide for them materialistically, but I actually choose not to for that reason because I think it made me appreciate things and to work hard for them. And that's exactly the right approach, says Spiro, if you want your kids to avoid affluenza. It's okay for a parent to say no or not today. So how do you know if your kid is coming down with a case of affluenza? Early signs of problems include the four T's. First, there are frequent tantrums and something called toy fatigue. When we talk about toy fatigue, we're saying that a child may have too many different objects and shift from one to the next to the next without truly appreciating the value and the intensity of that particular toy. Then there's topping. Your child is always trying to top other kids with the newest, trendiest toy. And they have trouble keeping friendships. Sometimes children will say, I have hundreds of friends. Well, they may actually have hundreds of acquaintances. Experts say parents can avoid affluenza, first by setting limits and then by setting goals for their kids. Children should be proud when they're able to earn something by honest, good, hard work. And instead of spending money on your kids, try spending some time. Children can understand love, not as L-O-V-E, but T-I-M-E. Now, psychologists say affluenza affects adults, too. That keep up with the Joneses philosophy is being blamed for driving up personal debt, increasing consumption and waste, overworking, overeating, and, of course, overstressing. Dr. Shonkin of CBS 4 News. Wow, I say no to my kids all the time, but then they, so they wear me. you down. <laughs> they wear me down, I end up saying yes. It's hard to say now. It's tough. That yep. does it for CBS 4 News. Mark and Steve, the cool morning guys. Talking turtle training. Yes, you can train 
a reptile to perform tricks like a dog. Our guest, Dr. Mitchell Spiro, has done so. Good morning. Good morning. How in the world do you train a turtle? Well, as a psychologist, I'm director of a practice called Child and Family Psychologists. I work with a lot of children, and basically I've noticed that he really paid attention to the kids as they would walk by in the hallway. What we ended up doing was teaching him to reach up to be picked up and then rewarding him, giving him attention by scratching his back. All right, now him. What, that, what's him's name? Well, I was going to move to North Carolina at one point to continue my doctoral education. Originally, I was going to be a vet, and we named him Florida, the state of Florida. And he's teaching children to overcome fears such as swimming, anxiety, and to literally come out of their shells. <laughs> Florida, Florida the turtle. And, and what kind of turtle is this? It's called a three-toe turtle, and that in the back paws, he only has three toes and five on the front. So we tease and say that he counts by 16s. Uh, <laughs> now, do turtles have much of a brain? Well, I will say that he pays attention better than a lot of people. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's not saying much. Originally, we figured that a turtle couldn't do very much, but he just continued to learn through the years and... The media made it seem as though all I've done in 10 years or so is just train this turtle. Right. Uh, actually, we have a, a DVD a series of books coming out. It can be uh, purchased through child and family psychologists at gmail.com. How do you get him to roll over? Well, if a turtle's on his back too long, they can suffocate. And at one point, with adding additional things to his home, I was concerned that he would be on his back and not make it through the night. So I'd put him on his back and encourage him, and he learned to push his neck all the way out as a turtle can, uh, push his paw up, and roll over. Um, he's really willing to learn almost anything that we take the time to teach him. Okay, well, if you put a turtle upside down and put him on his back, right? You know, and then he goes back on all fours, that's one thing. But if you can get it like a dog, roll over, and it does and like he a he rolls roll. over? See, that's what's just so amazing to me is how this can happen. So the, the, the turtle... When you have it roll over, it, it's not like it's standing on all fours and then it does like a, a, a roll. Oh, actually what he'll do is he'll reach up almost like an elephant on their hind legs, and then it's just the basic physics of a turtle shell. Uh, turtles never come literally out of their shells. They're attached to their homes, but he carries quite a load on his back. He rolls over because he's basically off center at that point. And then I've helped him to learn to recover quickly by pushing his neck out his paw, and then chasing my hand. Wow! So this guy actually will sit, stay, heal. He can be seen on uh, the archives of the Today Show from December 11th, also on NBC archives. I just find this fascinating. That it he is. Can do a, 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 and teach a reptile how to, to do tricks. To do tricks. Well, what he's done is he's helped children to overcome their own fears. Mm -hmm. See, when they come to see a psychologist, they're a little bit nervous. They walk into the hallway, and mm -hmm. I say, want to see my turtle do tricks? And they look at the aquarium expecting to see fish. They see this turtle that's paying attention. So I've helped them with children with attention deficit, hyperactivity mm -hmm. disorder, or anxious or shy kids. Okay. Very I put cool. them on the floor. That's and a kind of an... guy heals and sits, stays, rolls over, and even gives me a high five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm watching the video right now. It is amazing. But you got to be careful, Doc, going up to little kids going, you know, you want to see my turtle do tricks. <laughs> you could have Chris Hansen from Dateline NBC waiting in your lobby. If I wasn't a psychologist, they would think I was totally not. I hear you. Hey, doctor, nice to meet you. Well, thank you. I think it is something kind of silly. You know, you do the right thing for years. Uh, the practice of child and family psychologists has made a difference in so many children's lives. And then finally, the media catches something like this. <laughs> and, uh, oh, my God, this video is unbelievable. We'll put this up on the website.